Hey, what's up everyone? I'm back with another video. Welcome back to Refunded Roof. Today I'm gonna talk about dynos. I'm gonna tell you right off the bat what worked for me since I had dynos and my 40 gallon only one tank where I have my own enemies. And then I'm gonna tell you what can work for you as well since there's lots of different type of dynos. You can always Google and see which type of dynos you have and then figure out a plan how to deal with them. In this video, I'm just gonna talk how I dealt with my dynos and what else can help you as well. All right, so right off the bat, UV helped quite a lot. As soon as I installed UV, after a few days, dinos were gone. When I got my dinos, my enemies started to lose color, started to shrink down, and I knew if I left it that way, that they'll just perish. What I did, I ordered UV right off the bat, even though I didn't know if it's gonna work or not. Since for certain type of dinos, it doesn't work, and for others, it does. I was lucky in that way that UV just worked for me right off the bat. So that was quick lure for me, but I do know that this won't be the case for everyone. So that's first thing, I installed UV. Second thing, what I did, I started raising my nitrate and phosphates. I did that by removing some of my filtration. I had skimmer in that tank, which I removed, and I had the refugium running for 12 hours. I reduced that lighting on just four hours right now. I started feeding more. I started adding nitrates in this tank, and I started testing more just so I can make sure that I'm right where I should be as far as my nitrates and phosphates go. One thing that I wanted to mention as well is some folks will get dino because of imbalance between the phosphates and nitrates and some folks will get it just because their phosphates and nitrates are in zero. That's what happened to me. I know it can happen if your phosphates are a little bit higher and your nitrates are a little bit lower or opposite. So let me just talk about prevention right off the bat since I'm talking about phosphates and nitrates. For you to prevent or not having dinos, it's just making sure that your phosphates and nitrates are in order. Usually the best balance is if you have your nitrates 50 to 100 times more than your phosphates. I wanna mention right at the bat, don't do a water change. If you're gonna do a water change, if you plan to siphon the dinos out, siphon them through the sock into a bucket and then just put that water back. Your tank has no phosphates and nitrates right now, so there's no reason for you to do water change. What you can do is just if you need to balance your nitrates and phosphates, you can either dose phosphates or dose nitrates. Some folks had luck with dosing phytoplankton and adding pots to their tank. It seems that pots sometimes will munch on dinos so they'll add phyto to erase nutrients and to feed their pods they can increase the population of their pods some folks had luck with raising temperature as well when you run uv for 24 7 you're gonna raise temperature in your tank that's what's gonna happen so some folks just raise temperature in tank and that helped when your temperature is higher biology of your tank is gonna speed up a little bit what i did as well is i dosed iron Iron promotes algae growth. Since us reefers have lots of ways to combat algae, that's less of a problem. We can add herbivores, we can add cleanup crew, we can manually remove it. Algae is way less of a problem than dinos. Of course, I know some folks have algae and dinos in their tank, which might be some of the reasons why they have dinos in the first place, because that algae stripped all their nutrients and the dinos came in. Make sure you're gonna dose iron, test for your iron. Everything you add to your tank, make sure to test it, try to keep it stable. If you're gonna add nitrates and phosphates, test all the time. If UV haven't helped you, know that this won't be an easy fix. That this is gonna be something you're gonna have to deal with for a few months. Accept it that way, have patience and take your time. One other thing that worked for some people is dosing silicates, hydrogen peroxide, blackout for three days. Again, as far as black car goes, put some blanket on top of the tank or use any material to wrap around their tank so to make sure the lighting doesn't come in. If you have any corals, I really don't suggest for you doing this because your corals are gonna suffer big time. What you can do as well is just lower a little bit your lighting. I've noticed that lighting helps dinos grow big time. If you have low nutrients and high lighting in your tank, you're gonna get dinos. I know it's never a good option to mess with your LEDs, but at this time, when dinos kick in, learning lighting can help us a little bit. I've heard some folks saying that you should start your tank with live rock and live sand. And that kind of makes sense because live rock and live sand already have bacteria growing on them, or they have some type of algae. So basically, all the surfaces are already covered. So it makes more sense that dinos won't attack as easy as when you add dry sand and dry rock. I know I said quite a few things in this video. Again, UV helped me in raising those nitrates and phosphates. Hopefully this video will help you with combating your dinos. Just be patient, take your time, 
Don't break your tank down because of this. There's lots of ways you can deal with it. If you guys have any questions, drop them down below. With that out of the way, you guys have a great day. See you guys next video. And uh, yep, peace.